The Asphalt Art Program is administered by FC Moves, the Transportation Planning Department of the City of Fort Collins. The Paint Pot Program is a grant-funded asphalt art project made possible through a grant from the National Association of City Transportation Officials. With special thanks to Bike Fort Collins and Jillian Betterly for programmatic support. This storytelling project is a collection of voices from the neighborhoods where the asphalt murals were painted. Several of the voices are indigenous, Hispanic, and Latino community members with long generational ties to the neighborhoods called Tres Colonias, or the Spanish colonies. This episode features Juanita Guzman from Alta Vista during the installation of El Corazón de la Colonia by Moses Oqueli. Hi, I'm Juanita Guzman, and my mom, Margaret Guzman, has lived here or had lived here in Alta Vista neighborhood since 1997. In 98, she was in the process of buying the home right here on the corner next to the Alta Vista Park. Originally, neighbor to neighbor used to use it for their services for other families to help with assisted living and getting homes, whether it be buying or renting. Well, somehow or another, my mom learned that neighbor to neighbor was going to sell this house because they needed something bigger for their businesses. So this house was built in 1905. It was originally on a corner of Maldrum behind the old utilities building. A judge used to live in that house which was built in 1905, they moved this house over here to Alta Vista. After neighbor to neighbor used it for their services, they sold it to my mom, Margaret Guzman. And um, the Guzmans were born and raised in Eastern Colorado, Brush. Um, The reason we came to Fort Collins is because my mom was only 37 when she became a widow. She had... 11 children. Her and my dad had 11 children. Unfortunately, we lost my dad when he was 41 years old. My mom, at 37, had to quickly learn how to sustain and live with and raise her nine children that were still living. She had no idea what to do. She All she did was stay home, have babies, and do laundry, and tortillas every day and she didn't even know how to drive a car so when my mom when my dad passed um a dealership in brush gave her a really good deal a car plus taught her how to drive and that was a big feat for her just to learn sure she had sons that were 16 years old and they insisted oh we'll drive you around mom but she knew that couldn't happen all the time that was only for emergencies before she actually knew how to drive but then her doctor in brush realized how much under stress she was she was so under stress over stress trying to figure out how to raise her children and give them the food and protection they needed, schooling. And the doc- her doctor told her, Margaret, you need to leave Brush. You need to find something for yourself to help your children grow and, and the way you want them to be. So she t- was sent here to Fort Collins to start a nursing program. Uh, they, they were called LPN at that time, Licensed Practical Nurse. And the school at that time was on the corner of Harmony and Timberline. It's an old brick building. I believe it's now a daycare center. But I think maybe in the earlier years, it was a hospital, maybe a private hospital. And then later on, it became the nursing school. And that's where I think that school didn't last more than two more years for the nurses, nursing school after that, and then became preschools. But um, that's where my mom graduated. She, when she graduated, she became an, an LPN, and she continued to be a nurse at Poudre Valley Hospital here in LeMay. And that's where her whole career was as a nurse 
she and she bragged she was on the metal floor and that's where she, the floor she always worked on back then it wasn't the three or four stories it was just a two-story building there at that time and um, she lived there she worked there she grew another community of friends with doctors and nurses and they knew and would listen to her stories of growing up and how she survived her years um because before she even got married when she was a preteen she was born 1924 she contracted polio back then they didn't know what polio was they were treating her for, for digestive problems, um, the flu, blah, blah, blah. It was just horrible. But it affected her to where she could not walk anymore. And uh, she even was in a coma, like, for three months. She remembers waking up one time to one of her sisters coming home for Valentine's and bringing her a Valentine's um, card that they had made for her at school. And then after that, she's learning how to sit up, learn how to walk again. And then her whole family were the workers that went out to the fields. And they're the ones that went out and worked because she was getting stronger. She stood home with her grandmother and helped make the dinners or help take care of the babies that were left. And so she was the caretaker at home. And she, could, she never worked the fields. She could never do it because of her health from having polio. She didn't have the strength in her legs for that. But then she just had other great feats where she worked around and became a nurse and a mother and just was able to sustain all of her trials before that. And um, we came to Fort Collins in 68 and the majority of my family went to Fort Collins High and um, she even got one of her children, her son's Graduated from CSU, um, worked at Kodak. She, they made a name for themselves. My sister was a tennis player for Fort Collins. She was um, number one seed for many years, and people got to know my mom as following her children playing tennis. Other than being a nurse, she, being a nurse, she had a lot of trials and tribulations at work because... Her being a Mexican, a lot of Anglo people refused to have her as their nurse. And the doctors would support my mom and say, tell their patients, if you can't handle her being your nurse, then you need to go to a different hospital because Margaret Guzman is one of our best nurses. And sure enough, some of those people that argued about that in the first place, they became great friends with my mom. They respected and loved her because of the treatment she gave them. She went beyond being a nurse. She would trim their nails, paint their nails, um, scrub their hair, whatever she saw needed of them physically or mentally. Emotionally, she was there for them and they realized and learned fast and became friends with her. Yeah, they used mom as a moderator too. They'd call her down to the emergency room and mom would have to translate for the doctors, you know, and Spanish speak, speech, uh, Spanish speaking people. And um, that's how they'd get through to the patients is they call mom down and say, you need to help translate this patient. And she would, she would. And that's how doctors got to know her not just from the medical floor, but other doctors got to know her. Yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. I know one time when I was going through a divorce, my first divorce, I've only been divorced once, but um, we were separated. I still had two children at home. They were in junior high at that time. So we came and lived with her for several months before I could get back on my feet. The days off I had from my work, she still got up every morning with scrub this or that. She, I was doing laundry. She was always busy, busy, busy. And I always thought to myself, holy cow, you know, that's her day off. 
But yet she still does all this. I felt so guilty, you know. Why or where does she get this energy? And I just always prayed and wished I could have energy like that to do what she did. She was non-stop. And she had like six sisters and they were never like her. Never. Nobody was even close to what she did of her family. But then when she came to Alta Vista, she was pretty much on her own. All of her children had grown. She moved into Alta Vista in 98 through this house, 732 Alta Vista, which is right next door to the park. And there she started in another generation of growing with different folks again. And the elderly, they were good. They were pretty much her age, but the young people, they were, they had a lot of rules they needed to be confronted with. She respected her property. She respected the land around her, whether it be parks or neighbors' yards, her own yard. She always helped people um, improve their yards. And a lot of people weren't used to this. And if she saw anybody trying to abuse people's homes, she would confront them herself, not through the law, but through their parents and have their parents to seek what was going on, what needed to be done, what needed to help with the neighborhood, to help sustain and improve the neighborhood for everybody to get along. And eventually, slowly that became and where there was immigrants across the street that moved in, this poor, beautiful brick house was just abandoned. These, this family of six came from California. They were immigrants and orchid pickers. And they had no idea. All they spoke was Spanish, but they had no idea how to start or create they had dreams of what they wanted their home to look like. And my mom helped them. She helped them go to a bank and learn how to use the bank, how to open a checking account. She taught them how to go to places like Ace Hardware or Montgomery Wards back then it was, which is now probably like Home Depot. Um, but back then she taught them how to open up credit accounts and that's over where people were able to get their appliances and start learning how to improve their own homes, repainting, rebuilding. She shared um, buying fruit trees and a lot of the fruit trees around here. She helped as to where she even grew along with them. And those trees are just as old as all the others in the neighborhood. And People love that. And now the younger children of these people that moved in, now they're adults. And they remember that when they came to Fort Collins and they remember having nothing. And they said, if it wasn't for your mom to help my parents build a home for themselves, they don't know where they would be. Mom helped in every which way. And once people started establishing their own homes around here and we wanted to get parks and improve the streets, mom was right there along with the other two colonies that we were trying to improve for the city. Mom was always there um, donating her time because she was retired and she was a big canner of salsa. She grew her own chilies and tomatoes. She taught people in this community how to make salsa. People will still remember that to this day. You could smell the chilies being roasted and everything. She was very, very particular in how her salsa was made. And she shared that. She shared her secrets. She always told us, no, you don't, you can't, you can't ever know how I do it. She shared it. And you can talk to a couple of people in this community and still... They'll acknowledge that, yep, Margaret taught me how to do this, taught me how to do that. And it was pretty special. She did it to the last two years that she was starting to get older. And she um, 
couldn't do as much as she would like to, for with old age, it caught up with dementia and Alzheimer's. But she would still ask for certain people that and certain situations that happened 20 years before. And we would always tell her, yep, yeah, mom, the fruit trees are still there. Yes, mom, the Lopez's are still there. Yes, you know, the family's still there. She would always ask the same questions over and over about what she had done, how she had created her life here in Fort Collins. And to this day, my family and friends, neighbors will never, never forget the strength. To this day, I think every day, I wish I'd have the strength and momentum my mom had, the belief. I mean, how else can you keep on going for everything that you went through? It would be so easy just to lay back and feel sorry for yourself. But no, she was barely able to walk. She always had a limp from her polio that she recovered from, but that didn't stop her from being a nurse, stopping walking around these neighborhoods, putting flyers out, telling them, we have trash weekend. She would hire big dumpsters to come here and people would clean out their backyards and she would have made burritos that day. People, it was trash day. People would come and bring in their trash for the day. Filling the dumpsters, she would have burritos out here because people were raking their yards and she'd have water and burritos for them. She just made it a fun event, but very, very useful too. She just wanted to combine people to get together. And that was the best, best memories for her. I'll never forget. When my siblings were younger, sure, they helped out. But as they, everybody got older and their families, we all moved apart. And I told my husband after my mom passed, I said, I can't leave this house knowing somebody else lives in it. I can't drive by and know when somebody else lives in it. I have to get it. I have to buy this house. And my family all agreed, go for it, Juanita. I said, this is mom's. And I still say Granny's house. <laughs> so, and my brothers, they go, do you have, do you feel like there's ghosts in the house? I go, sometimes, sometimes, but it's all good. It's all good. Hi, mom. You know, <laughs> it's okay. I'm not afraid. It's all good. Yeah. She had, she loved flowers. She loved gardening, but she could never keep a backyard because she loved dogs. She had a big um, chow mix, lab and chow mix, and she called it Pierta. I don't know what it means in English, but that dog trampled everything in the back. I would try to plant flowers for her. The dogs trampled them down. Um, then she put up fences, so we created the front for her and like bought her clematis to grow up and flowers so she could keep my son was a landscaper from Budweiser and he brought the leftover tulips. So every spring, if you drive by here, you'll see her tulips bloom and they're still, they still come up every year. She loves that. And um, it was pretty cool. And now I have flowers galore and the garden's full. I mean, my family calls it the jungle because we don't have pets, big dogs and to trample the yard. It's a jungle. We have varmints and squirrels, raccoons. Everybody comes after the gardening and flowers. So it's pretty cool. And I, a nice, oh, I can sit back there and if a dragon fly, flies by, I say, hey, mom, this is for you. These flowers are for you. Um, and her history here in Fort Collins. And now we have great, great grandchildren here. And I hope they'll always remember hearing Grangy stories in Alta Vista. Thank you.